was, I was trained as an occupational therapist. Bottom line, I was kind of people developed the skills to survive despite having mental health problems. Well, when you introduced me to the idea of a writer, storyteller, in residence, um, it seemed an attractive idea to get people to be able to write their own narrative. Mm -hmm. After years of working with people with mental health problems, I've realised they have a story to tell, perhaps, and not been able to have the skills or the confidence to do that. They don't often have a voice, do they? No. And that's why you've helped them develop oh, that voice. Thank you. And to put things down in, in, in word, really, emotions mm. and their stories. So much has happened to I wanted to try and put some of it out mm. to let people know that you can survive bad things. And you haven't written much before, no. have you? No. I found it brilliant. Mm. Especially, and I'm only being honest, the storytelling. I really enjoyed it, I really enjoyed it, and um, um, I find that anybody can write if they want, you know. You don't have to be super talented, I think, I think we're all super talented anyway as people, you know. To learn to speak and communicate, we take it for granted, and, and it's, it's a real special gift. Joking aside, being on comic is no joke. In mental health, you need those places to socialise, mm. to meet people. I've been coming here 22 years. I came along just for an interview and an informal chat, and I liked it here the first, just from the first day that I came. I like it. There's a nice atmosphere, mm. and you've got any problems, we can sort them out and things and talk with certain people that might be able to help. I really love it in here because I can be creative and it's a relaxing room to be in. I really like it because there's people with, I'm trying to put this properly, there's people with problems so I don't feel as alone as I did. Yeah, that's good. Because it's kind of like a club atmosphere, I think. It is, yes. Yeah. It's a nice place uh, and it's, there's no sort of clubs in my area so I come to the Phoenix which is about eight miles away from where I live. As far as that, yeah, but you come because you just enjoy it, yeah. I, I must admit that I've only been here a few weeks, but I found the atmosphere very warm, very inviting. Everyone's extremely friendly, yeah, everybody yeah. has mutual respect for one another, they do. and the staff are really helpful. What brought you here? It was a flyer that was given out, and Anvil House, that's a company that I live with, got one of the flyers and. Simon, my care worker, explained to me that I would very likely enjoy it. And have you? I have, it's yeah. been brilliant. I've never, I've never been involved in nothing like that before. When you first wrote a poem, you'd never written a poem before, had you? I've never written before. No. no. You haven't written much before, no. have you? No. no. I, I suffer from dyslexia and I've always had problems with reading and writing. And when I was younger, I missed a lot of my education. And I thought it would be an op opportunity, you know, as I'm getting a bit older now, to perhaps do something that I'd missed out on when I was younger. And how did you find the process then? I found it really good, very interesting, uh, especially with the others. I'd never really done anything in a group session like that before. It was all new to me, but I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. I, I was very nervous, nervous at first, but, you know, I'm feeling a lot better now. Good. And I'm really... Uh, uh, I'm really proud of this um, story. I used to write stories when I was a youngster at yeah. school, but not since then, no. no. So what's it been like writing again? Have you enjoyed it? Very challenging. <laughs> Hard and challenging, I found it. Yeah. Have you enjoyed any of it? I've enjoyed all of it. You showed me how to put it into words and how to bring it out without it sounding stupid. Oh, I've got a lot of poems that I've always wanted to be released. And I thought this would be a way of doing it. And I thought I'd give it a, a, a chance and see if I can have it as an, an outlet for my experiences and feelings. What was it? Was it like you expected it to be, or not really? I didn't know what to expect to be honest. <laughs> it's kind of nice to put um, a lot of emotions and thoughts of care and stand on pain. So tell me a little bit about the process of what you went through. Uh, we, we kind of sat together and put a lot of thoughts and feelings down on this paper with guidance from yourself, Jane. And then um, you carefully you kind of managed to pull it together for us too. So it was like a bunch of words, wasn't it? And then, and then like once it, it was kind of pulled together, but 
all the words were, were our own. I learned a lot from it. I learned um, how to do things more concisely. So do you think you will go on writing as a form of expression? Um, I'd like to think so, yeah. Mm. yeah um, I might do some more courses in subjects, I don't know what yet, but that's something in spare time. Alarm goes off, open eyes, hit the snooze button for the tenth time. The amazing thing is that apparently I died that night when my head hit the road. The doctors told me that. But for some reason, and people have told me God may have played a part in this, the very first person who pulled up in a car after I jumped was the first aid officer. No one listens, no one cares, no one hears what I'm saying. Who cares anyway? I'm just living, but not the way I want. Take these pills, they'll make you better. That's not what I want. Communication is a great pacifier of the people. A symbolic reference we learn. A well old machine and the papers and politicians telling us what to think, who our brothers are, who they are not. It taught me how to hold my head up high and mind my P's and Q's. But if I was naughty, he was strict and I felt the smack of his belt. It was all right, I could take it. I knew he loved me deep down. He was just trying to teach me things and he thought the world of my mum. When we finally left him, he was a broken man. He died three years ago, but I still miss him today. I know he loved me and believed in me. And because of that, I want to say, thanks, Dad. I never saw him again. Why do I want to tell this story? I think it's because in the last few years, I've been very ill and gone through some very bad times. Those memories of our childhood adventure together will always be very special. You shout why? Why me? Why us? But you know, you can't make a fuss. Of course I care. I care for you every day. Then the journey that's in that poem, it's what I know. Mm. It's and all genuine, it's all real. And the same for you, Joyce, yes. as well? Yes, yes. yes. yes.